Hello viewers, welcome back to computer networking classes. In previous video, we had studied about concepts of BGP. In this video, we will discuss about all the broadcasting methods and how broadcasting is achieved. Now, why we need broadcasting? Broadcasting means to send a packet to multiple source or to all of the destinations present in the network. So, formal definition is sending of packets from source node to all other nodes in network. And difference between broadcasting and multicasting is multicasting is sending a copy of packet to a subset of the other network nodes. Means subset of these all other nodes is called multicasting uh, routing. Now, broadcasting routing algor algorithm. So, what are the uh, broadcasting uh, routing algorithms used in day to day scenario? So one is n-way unicasting. What do we mean by n-way unicasting is we will make a n copies of a packet and send it to all other n nodes. Okay, this is simple approach where we generate n copies of packet and send these to each node present in the no uh, network node. Now we need no new protocol but there is a possibility of packet duplication and forwarding functionality is needed in this algorithm. So like from this diagram we can understood that this link if we want to send n copies of a packet from R1 to all other nodes this link will get overused or there will be, uh, will be a huge traffic on this link and uh, the speed will be slow in n-way unicasting. Thus drawbacks are it is inefficient as I told you it is an inefficient and uh, assumption is all router is known which may get wrong so it assumes that we know all the link state of all the routers but it is not the uh, not in real case okay and uh, we uh, because of this there is a huge complexity because of overhead overhead means there we have to save a lot of information of all the routers in one router okay now unwise to use unicast routing infrastructure to achieve broadcasting okay from uh, because of these all drawbacks it is unwise to use unicasting and we unicasting uh, so the other case is uncontrolled routing here uh, the packet is copied to all uh, destination and uh, then it will resend the packet okay so what i am telling is that let's say in this diagram if r1 sends a copy of a packet to r2 okay now r2 will save a copy of the packet and forward it to r3 and r4 and r1 2 in this way broadcasting is done but there also there is a drawback what is the drawback is that if there exists any loop then the packet will be forwarded infinitely now in this diagram you can understand that if R1 is also connected to R3 and R2 is sending some data to R1 and R1 is sending data to R3. Now R3 can uh, re repeatedly send that packet to R2. In this way it will form a loop and will send infinitely times. If a node is connected to more than two nodes on receival of packet from each node it has to save a copy which may become fatal. Okay like this like in this uh, scenario if r1 is sending r2 and r2 is sending some copy to r3 now r2 will get a copy from r3 to and r4 to and from r1 also so this will uh, this will uh, create a lot of duplication in the network which is unnecessary so the solution is we use controlled flooding so what is controlled flooding is in this approach sequence number is assigned to the packet so now we will uh, assign a unique id or number or address to the coming packet or broadcasting packet if the packet uh, coming have a number which is already saved in the routing table then it will be dropped otherwise the packet will be accepted now another approach is we use reverse for, uh, path forwarding what do we mean by reverse path forwarding is that uh, if the packet is not coming from its shortest path uh, to the source means like you can say that 
if the packet is uh, coming from a b t, uh, a to b then b to c then c will uh, reject the packet from b because the uh, shortest path from c uh, to a is this one okay so it will get to know that it will receive the packet or has already received the packet uh, thus it will reject the packet in same way b will also reject the packet from a to c and c to b okay it will only accept the packet from a to b in this way the packet is rejected and gets dropped but here also there is a huge drawback that this link is used unnecessarily for these packets which are rejected by b or c okay so we need to overcome this to overcome this uh, drawback we uh, we are using a spanning tree concept what is a spanning tree uh, broadcast spanning tree is mainly a basically a graph okay uh, in which all nodes are connected uh, which are present in the graph and there is no cycle happening in uh, inside a graph so this is called spanning tree broadcast so we are using this and uh, definition is all nodes should be covered e dash should be a subset of e means all the links edges and a graph should be connected so all nodes should be connected and covered no cycles should be present and the one with minimum cost is known as minimum spanning tree so the tree with min uh, the least cost is called minimum spanning tree so a spanning tree approach is that uh, if d wants to or a wants to send some data let's say a wants to send some data to all other nodes or broadcast some message it will do in such a way that these links will not use uh, will not be used and only the uh, links which are present in a spanning tree will only get used so a will send to b b to d and d to g in similar manner a to c c to f and c to e the, uh, these thick lines are the lines or links for spanning tree in similar way if d wants to send some data it will uh, it will not directly send data to e it will directly uh, send data to b then a then c then e so e will not get the data directly from d it, it has to the packet has to cover these all paths to get some data to e so there is a complexity in making a spanning tree or minimum spanning tree so uh, how it is made is that we use center based approach what is center based approach is if let's say we make e as a center for this tree or this graph how will it made firstly f will send a membership report or query message to e that he wants to connect or he wants a data uh, or he wants to connect in a minimum spanning tree concept now uh, once f will be connected there is uh, there is e and f nodes present in minimum spanning tree now d will or b will query the message and uh, wants to connect e and it will connect to e via d hence the, uh, this link will be formed now the minimum spanning tree will be b d e and f now a will connect and then c will connect similar way g will connect to d and hence center based approach will get fulfilled so that's all for uh, broadcast in next video we will discuss about multicast till then thank you